Let's welcome our auditor, Michael Stanziano. We thank him for venturing over to us today in the uh, uh, weather, and uh, thanks so much. He's got a PowerPoint presentation for us, and we'll answer some questions. Michael, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. I am Michael Sanziano. I have the honor of serving as your Franklin County Auditor. For those that aren't familiar, I've been Auditor less than two years since I took office on March 11th, 2019. Uh, weather wasn't quite that bad uh, uh, on that day, and so uh, lots changed, obviously. Pandemic has impacted, but I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, I was given some topics that you all wanted to cover, but at any time, feel free to interrupt, ask questions, so we'll let me know what you want to talk about. So our biggest activity last year was the triennial update. For those that aren't familiar, I'm going to guess everyone is. Uh, we are required every three years to do appraisal updating. 2017 was the mass appraisal under Ohio law, so that's when the office goes out and reviews each parcel by review. Kind of look, there's a house there, see if there's any updates. The 2020 triennial update is looking at real estate trends and then updating based on what those real estate trends are showing. As you know, we have a very busy, active market. Uh, maybe not with a lot for sale, uh, but in terms of what gets listed gets sold at a higher price. And so in that, from 2017 to 2020, uh, on average across Franklin County, we saw a 20% value increase on the residential side, 15% on the commercial side. And so, you know, really exciting in the middle of a pandemic to go out and tell people your property values are going up. Uh, we did request a one-year delay from the uh, Department of Taxation Commissioner. That request was denied, so we conducted our uh, process. Again, notify everyone in August through the Know Your Home Value campaign of what that increase was going to be, and then invite them to participate in the informal review process. Of those, we had 8,054 uh, property owners partake in the informal review process, 40% of which saw a change in their value. It was unique where we would hear from folks, you know, the value is too high, other my value is too low, and those are the ones we anticipate maybe selling in the next six uh, months to a year. Uh, that's not a good slide, well, it looks better on the board, but across the county where we saw the average increases broken down by the school district, uh, so that kind of helps tell the story of what occurred across Franklin County in 2017. So Whitehall had a 25% increase. Yeah, so I mean, what, what, it was, what was unique and fascinating were the lower price point communities saw so the bigger increase. Because wow. there were people, A, able to get in there, potentially flip, and then turn it around. But where you see New Albany, a $1.3 million house isn't really gonna jump up another 20%, even though you'll see that. But if it's a $150,000 house, you can make that 20% jump pretty fast in that three year gap. So that's where it's a little deceiving uh, so City of Columbus also saw larger increases, particularly in what they will call the uh, emerging neighborhoods or opportunity neighborhoods. Uh, so that is kind of what's at play when you see the percentages. When we do our training update, one thing that's counterintuitive for folks is we break down to what we call our appraisal neighborhoods, a little different than what you all may think of neighborhoods. That's been a big education when we talk to property owners. One thing we did different though is we increased our number of trainial neighborhoods, so really try to focus down on similar characteristics of uh, features. Inherited in 2017 a larger uh, trainial uh, or larger appraisal neighborhoods, and that caused a lot more of the consternation that my house that's 300,000 in uh, Upper Arlington is being compared to a house that's 800,000 uh, in Upper Arlington. And so by adding more of those neighborhoods, we felt, and it, it seemed to bear out, that we were able to better target, get people with like size lots, and make sure those values and percentages were increasing at the same range. This is something we will continue to do as we build towards the 2023 mass appraisal. We want to keep adding more of those neighborhoods. And the good news with the technology that we've been able to invest in as an office, we're able to do that. These are the Worthington uh, community neighborhoods broken down again. So you can see where there's percentages. So the Smoky Ridge townhomes actually saw a decrease, for example, or the old Angie High Bluff townhomes saw an increase of 23%. So really, we're able to target that down, happy to provide that information uh, when I am not up here dancing. <laughs> uh, one thing we do monthly is we put out a real estate dashboard. You can take all the information based on the uh, transfer conveyances we have in our office and we post it. You can break it down by school districts, you can break it down by municipalities or cities. 
uh, here in the city of Columbus, you can break down by area emissions. And so you can do a comparison, uh, not only what happened last month, but then do uh, over years, over months. So in January uh, 2020, January, so this one's in fact, I think the next one in January, uh, we're able to continue to show the trends of what we're seeing in our office in the real estate market. And that's on your auditor site? It is on our auditor okay. website. Okay. I put it out in real estate cities. Well, title's hurting too, aren't they? I was. Everyone's hurting except Easton, although Easton will tell you they're hurting as well. I was Easton really you. fought their value. Um, and, it, and it was a fascinating kind of back and forth where part of what occurred and what I inherited. So two auditors ago, so under Auditor Testa, when we went through the last recession, the timing of the recession was such that we froze values across the county. The timing of the pandemic occurred after we had kind of and the we being me and other 40 some auditors that were either doing a mass appraiser or a try uh, update had already done the numbers. It really was just that education piece. We did not know the role of the impact where during the recession, you could see the sales were hitting where they were hitting. And so Tesla was able to go flat. A lot of those commercial property owners remember that and were saying, well, why aren't we going back to that situation? But you continue to see them building, adding, using Easton as the example. But at the same time, are they having all their tenants pay? They are still losing tenants. I mean, it's just the nature of some of those commercial properties and commercial endeavors just evolving and figuring out with e-commerce. During a pandemic when they can't be open the whole time like they're used to anyways. Well, did title go into foreclosure? That's what I was told. I they, I believe, did go into foreclosure. I'm trying to remember the Polaris article because they mentioned the title piece. Okay. Mentioned mediation, again, nothing to lose. If you go to mediation, you're not happy with it, you can still take it to the more formal BOR if you aren't happy. So we really try to be uh, driven to help motivate uh, the property owner to get to that value that they feel is the right value. And there are definitely different parts of the process that if you're not happy, you can continue uh, to either learn and build a better argument or uh, Keep moving through and challenging and challenging and challenging. The most unique uh, property that I learned about, someone thought their value was too high because they had snakes in the grass. It's like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do on that. <laughs> he wrote me an email, we got mold in the fridge and I've got snakes in my lawn. It's like, okay, <laughs> it does not impact how we're going to appraise. Uh, cases not for mediation, commercial, homestead, CAUVs for farm, uh, for agricultural land, uh, recent sales and complaints with the Board of uh, Education. On mediation. So we have six contracted mediators. Uh, three members of my staff will be the ones that would sit across. The mediators come in or the neutral third party, uh, support staff, complaint attorney, if needed, interpreter is available if requested. Wow, on mediation. I apologize. Did, do you guys really want to know about mediation? <laughs> All right, I'll keep flying through then. We have, again, part of where I give uh, previous administrations credit. The, goal of the mediation was to reduce the VOR backlog, uh, to really get on those cases that are multi-million dollar complaints at play. When it's $50,000 or less, not that that is not substantial, uh, but it's not really where the school districts are focused on the residential side in particular. Uh, and so we continue to see a lot of success. It has reduced significantly the VOR timing process. Uh, and so we we're pretty proud and brag about the mediation program, of which was already in place before I got there. I just get to inherit it. There was a request for a, or a question about the tax bill. So we added that slide. I do not issue the tax bill. Uh, we helped set the tax rate, uh, but happy to answer any frustrations or questions that you may have experienced with your most recent tax bill process. Any questions or thoughts? It's the treasurer. It's too high? We, 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 we play a small role in that. So yes. Um, a lot of what we heard or what we continue to see is because of the mail. Those individuals that do pay their property tax directly uh, wrote a check and have not seen it cashed or been processed. The treasurer's office uh, commitment is if it's been postmarked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know one thing, Michael, that, that works well for those of you in here that don't know, but the auditor site now where the data used to be a little bit hard to find for, you know, neighborhoods and if you want to collect a list, if you want to filter those lists down, 
It is really, because we used to get, they would send us a download in Excel, they'd export the entire database. So you'd have an Excel, Excel spreadsheet, you'd have to go through yourself and figure that stuff out, but now you can look for so I'm chuckling because it has been part of the presentation and everyone looks at me with like dead face so I hold it from the presentation yeah. like, of course it's the one time so it's like it's great. Yeah. Uh, we have also added a YouTube video on how to do those searches uh, because just clicking doesn't really get to just how drilled down you can identify oh, the neighborhood, the blocks. Uh, it is a great tool and we continue to enhance and improve it. Um, we've got great um, GIS partners and doing our county flyovers. Uh, we are going out in the field and taking our property pictures. So if you feel property needs a better looking photo, get ready because they're they're driving around. Uh, and, and we do take a lot of pride in that. But I'll, I'll tell you, I have done maybe 30 presentations that it's been in there and I just had it taken out. Uh, I, was well, I did Hilliard on Zoom this week. Yeah, yeah the because you're going to look at me like, <laughs> well, if you want to find tax money, like that, if you want to find non-resident, you want to find absentee property owners, you want to start to really, you know, narrow that down and rifle it down, you can, you can do that for at least, yeah. it's pretty awesome. Uh, you want to go oh, no, I was just going to piggyback on that. I had a property that was built in 2019 and it wasn't on the auditor site, so I called the office and they couldn't find it initially either, but they called me back within like 20 minutes and left me a voicemail. So if you can't find something, they're very responsive. Yeah, we try. Then, Chris, no, sorry, Chris, to your point about inventory earlier, you can filter that site now by how long people have been in their, in their home. Can you? Oh yeah. I didn't know that. So you can start looking in an area and say, listen, you search one that's I really wish I had not taken this out. No, <laughs> you have really been in there for 30 search. years or more, right? So you don't have to guess at which houses. Mm. Right? It, it's pretty awesome. You don't have to call the title company. Just a, mm. you don't have to call it. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Some of the investment groups in that, they pay and you cannot find out. Who well, so we continue problem. to have an LLC loophole issue in the great state of Ohio where they are able to transfer. They know there's some property worthy to uh, where if they set it up through an LLC uh, and it's not open to the same records and disclosures, and you're correct, they are able to kind of to some extent. Yeah. It's legal, uh, it's good lawyering, uh, but I don't think that was the intent, but the, uh, a number of groups continue to see benefits one way or the other to having that LLC piece be in there, and so I don't think it's gonna change the other thing that I talked to you about earlier, you need to find out wherever we can go, because uh, I've done it before, but it was difficult to do the lot splits and everything and find the twin single, splitting it and making it attached single family so you get two homes for sale. But it was a nightmare just trying to get the uh, lot split done. So how do we need to do that? Through, if you can assist me in that anywhere, uh, I can end up, uh, I'll buy you know, 10, 15 twin singles and then split them and then all of a sudden we've got 30 homes. It would be helpful as we continue to grow our population yeah. without enough housing. Well, thank you for thank being you here, Michael. All right, Michael. Very, very good about going to all these first places. We really, really appreciate that. Have you thought about listening to her? If you're surprised, I have a five and a seven year old in Columbus City Schools. So we are that demo target. Okay, now if you could just help me to get my screen cloud, we'd be awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much for being Thank here. I'm all. sure he'll be uh, welcome to answer any questions. You got his email and his phone number up there, and uh, that's excellent. We're going to go around the room here shortly. Look at your program here. We've got some other speakers coming up. It's been a very uh, productive time when we.